I'm glad you said muscle memory. That that leads me to my to my other section of the four important sharpening concepts, which is consistency. So um, consistency, like the way I described it was, you have to worry about your angle, you have to worry about your pressure, which we will talk about, and then we have to worry about consistency in the burr. So consistency is talking about the consistency that you have within that angle and that pressure, right? So it's kind of like a, it talks about everything because the more consistent you are with your movements, with your angle and with your pressure, the more sharp your knife is going to be over time, which is tough because you don't have that muscle memory at first, but with practice, you'll develop it. Um, that's sort of like what I think of as consistency. And I think it's worth it. It, it, it kind of, there's a level of consistency that you need in every section of what we're talking about. I think the other point that doesn't get talked about enough is the idea of consistently wearing your stone down. So I worked with a, I worked with a guy at a butcher shop for a, a while when I was living in California and he would sharpen knives one day a week at the butcher shop for customers. And mm -hmm. he had this incredible knowledge of angles and working with different knives. And he was like an old school Sabatier collector. Like he just loved these old school French, you know, knives that were anyways, he, cool. but the thing that irked me about him was that he spent in his entire time sharpening in the lower third of the stone. And so he would just kind of do these little micro movements back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he's like, I'm so fast at sharpening. And then you look at his stones and they look like skateboard ramps. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like, there's an element of consistency that also comes with like using the entire stone. A lot right. of it, it's counterintuitive because you think that it's like, oh, well, I'm doing these long passes, like more time spent on that push is actually like, it's, it's going to be faster for you. And it's going to be, to your point, more consistent. Because if your stone is consistently flat, there's not scratches, there's not these little like divots or, or, or curves in your stone. Like what a, what a way to sabotage yourself by thinking that you have the angle right, but there's this one little inch of your stone where there's a curve in it. And so every time you pass the blade over that curve, your angle is changing right? Whether you like it or not, because like geometrically, like as that blade goes over that piece of rock, you're keeping the knife angle the same, but the angle of the stone is changing, you know? So that's not consistent just by definition. And so, um, yeah, completely agree with you from the sense of hammering home consistency from the sense of what is that, um, that phrase? It's like, um, uh, smooth, uh, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Like, think about that as you're starting, because it, it, it really is true. Like, it's mm -hmm. way better to get accuracy first and then get speed versus this idea that you have to, like, I had a guy who was the, the teaching assistant in culinary school for the butchery uh, class, and he would sharpen his knives before class just to kind of flex on the students. And he loved the fact that he was just like hammering away at like on this stone, like going super fast. And everybody thought that he was so cool. But like, he had the muscle memory down where his angle was like, rock solid consistent as he was doing these quick movements and if you're the type of person that wants to you know touch up your knives on a stone before you go into work like that can be a great practice for you but don't do it if you don't it's the same with working out man like you see those people who just like they do their bicep curls but they're like you yeah. know like doing their back <laughs> thing yeah they're like they're they're, they're they're heaving it up and it's just like your yeah. form is your form is horrible and you're you're gonna cause yeah. harm down the line and so um yeah, the consistency thing as far as, like, if, 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 if you don't mind me t touching on angles and pressure, like, um, there are there are certain pieces with um, – certain pieces of advice that, that I think are valuable to touch on both of these. So on consistency, use the entire stone. Keep your pressure consistent from the sense of th – there's one that I – there's a piece of advice that I really like that I haven't – that I didn't include in my videos, which is – decide the um, the um, the number of pounds of pressure that you push down and when you tell someone about this it's difficult to visualize and so the the analogy is you take a scale you take your knife and you press down on the scale to i, I believe it's four to five pounds of pressure right. is what you want and so that gives you a, a a sense of oh this is what pushing down on a knife on a stone with four pounds of pressure feels like and then you can check yourself, you know, do this thing where you press it down, you close your eyes, you press down what you think four pounds of pressure is, and you open your eyes and you look. And how close are you? 
you know, in the same, because it, that's how you're going to develop that, that muscle memory sense. And then the other thing that I think you and I have spoke about in the past is on your harsher grit stones. So your thousand grit, your 800 grit, you know, maybe your 600 grit, you want to be pushing pretty hard. And that's like the upper end of that, you know, your five to six pounds of pressure get pressing down on that stone, because that's where a lot of the work is going to be done. The, the, the caveat to that is if you're doing a, a diamond stone, a 300 grit, you know, like a really coarse stone, it can be counterproductive to go that hard with that coarse of a grit because you're actually taking off a ton of steel. The thousand grit range plus or minus is a really good place to spend a lot of your time because it's enough grit where it's actually going to reshape the edge and give you give you a nice bevel but it's not so and and um so it's coarse enough where it's actually going to be doing something but it's not so uh um f your your edge isn't shaped yet so you don't actually need um to go gentle and try to get a polish at that stage in the game and so i thought like that's what's helpful for me in thinking about like consistency on um pressure and then as far as angle goes well so there's a, there's another piece to that too i feel like a lot of people miss sharpening the tip and the heel of their knife they'll spend a lot of time in the center and they feel like they're being consistent there but it's almost like if you've ever seen a, a basketball player do their free throw they get the ball they dribble it a couple times they like they look up, then they look down, and then they do their shot. You want to have the same routine on your knife when you when you touch it on the stone. And so for me, that's like I do a heavy pressure with my thumb on the heel, and then I do like a couple passes there. Then I move up into like the lower third, do a couple passes there, middle third, upper third, and then tip. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. I do a couple little like tip tip angle adjustments. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of like do a swoop down. It seems so silly. Like someone commented when I was doing a live stream on sharpening the other day, they're like, why do you do this weird motion on the tip? And it's like, that's my free throw thing. That's my free throw yeah. thing. You know you what know I mean? It's like, this. This is you. yeah, I do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's not, it's not even, it's not even beneficial from like a sharpening perspective, but it's, that's consistency in my mind. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, exactly how you treat a knife when it touches the stone and you do that every single time. And, and, and that's ultimately what gives you that muscle memory and the ability to like, cause I've had it go the opposite way where I didn't have that heel routine and I would have this issue where my heel wasn't getting sharpened. Cause I would just start on the top lower, like that lower third of the blade and it, my, my heels weren't getting sharpened and, and, and ultimately it caused like real performance problems yeah, on the I cutting agree. board. So I use my heel a lot too. So it's yeah. important to get that. Some people leave it dull and just use it to like crack bones and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty totally cool. possible. But, but yeah. and again, and again, that's per, that's personal preference. And if that's your point of, I need to consistently have kind of like a dull heel of my knife. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Um, I mean, last point on consistency on angles is just like once you you know I did a survey on my on the channel. Most people use between one and four knives on a right on a super regular basis. Yeah. So if you, that's about right. Yeah, if, if you know, if you realistically know how your knives work, yeah, there you go. Exactly. If you realistically know how each of your knives behaves, similar to how people who have like four cars in their garage, you know, like it must be nice, you know, yeah. but they know how all four of those cars drive, you know? And so if you can consistently know like, oh, this is how this knife reacts. This is the angle that I have to be careful of on this, on this specific blade, um, you know, then it just comes down to, to that muscle memory. And that's why I talk about um, using these visual references to try to get yourself. It's a, it's a very, it's a learning thing. It's, it's, it's almost like teaching someone how to, how to surf. Like we can talk about it for days and days and days and days and days, but until you get out on the water, like until you're on a wave, um, you're not going to exactly know how all of this knowledge applies in a real world situation. So as intimidating as it can feel, you know, like go buy a $30 stone and a $40 knife you know, something that's going to actually give you that tangible experience and then just start and, and, and go from there. For sure. I love that, man. I love that. Um, yeah. I mean, for me, I actually foolishly, um, I even had cheaper knives. I don't know what I did, but why I did this, but when I, I first bought a Misono UX 10, three, four years ago at this point, I still have it. And 
um, it, I learned to sharpen on it. So I screwed that thing. I mean, like I, I've, I've since repaired it, but like, I mean, this thing has some serious, like some battle wounds, you know, like I don't, you can't really see like the scuffs and stuff, but now it's back to being razor sharp um, and stuff. But yeah, I love that idea about the Victorian axe. It's a great, great uh, piece of advice there.